Hi guys, Merlini here. I wanted to talk about one of the most confusing items in the game, the Hand of Midas. And I'm going to revisit an old episode of the Mailbag just because there were a lot of questions surfacing around a year and a half ago uh, for the Hand of Midas. And I wanted to reiterate some of the points as, uh, and bring up some new ones about this 2050 gold item. So. Uh, the question that I actually got at the time was, I've been noticing a lot of Midas builds on heroes that don't usually build it. For example, I saw a few Crystal Maidens in the pro scene building it. In addition, I even saw you build a hand of Midas on Puck in one of the tournaments with Purge. Can you explain why you and a few CMs build this item? Special thanks to Kyle from Canada and System Error from Germany for this week's questions. So this is a common uh, thing that you'll see in Pup. is like, why is my support getting a Midas when they could have spent that 2,000 gold on a mech, on a Blink Dagger, on a Force Staff, on a Point Booster, an Ogre Club, on pretty much anything else. And people get irritated that people get Midas without actually thoroughly understanding the item, both the people that get it and the people that criticize it. So I am going to raise some other points after I discuss the basics of the item. Gloves of Haste, 500 gold recipe, bumped up from 1400 to 1550, hand of Midas, 2050 gold. 30% attack speed passive. And your active transmute gives 2.5x a unit's normal experience bounty instead of the normal XP. And it gives 190 reliable gold instead of the normal gold. 100 second cooldown averages to 114 gold per minute if you use it on uh, cooldown. And you can't transmute ancients or necro creeps. That's nothing new. So, first things first for Midas. Um, why Midas? It's, it's commonly misunderstood. It's actually a versatile item. And why do I say this? It's because. Things like Battle Fury, if you get Battle Fury, you have to farm stacks. Because if you're not cleaving and not using the HP and the mana regeneration, it's not really worth getting. You might as well uh, just be hitting creeps in lane or just get a, like a Mask of Madness, let's say, and just power farm the creeps with an Aquilo. And that is much cheaper than a Battle Fury. Uh, so if you don't actually have stacks, you're not actually putting it to that much use. And the thing about Midas is actually more versatile than a Battle Fury, at least I think, just because it doesn't take any time for you to Midas. Like with Battle Fury, you have to sit there and get your supports to stack, as well as sit there farming the creeps. With Midas, you just drive by a neutral camp or a lane and you Midas. And there's very few situations where you won't be close to either one of those. Um, so you're actually like buying yourself time. Uh, I guess that's sort of the case with Battle Fury, but Battle Fury, you're just cutting down on like percentage time farming. Whereas Midas, you can actually completely eliminate uh, doing camps because you just drive by in Midas. It's almost literally no time at all. Um, so you also have to consider your gold sources. Like when you just drive by and Midas, you're usually looking to fight. And when you fight, your GPM is not going to be as high, usually. So this is an example from a 310 GPM situation where you get 114 from Midas, as I mentioned before. Creeps aren't going to be that much because you're fighting all the time and you're getting 140 gold per minute from kills and objectives. Um, so this is like a poor man situation, and this is like the bloodbath of a game. And you die sometimes, you get some kills, but all in all, it's about even. And for a 750 GPM game on the right side, where you're just completely free farming the whole entire time, you'll get some minor gold from kills and objectives, your teammate pushes down a tower, or some support kinks your lane or something like that. Creeps 586 and Midas sta stagnant at that 114 gold per minute. So the one thing to consider is the ratio of the Midas to the Creeps. So Midas is blue and Creeps is red. Midas is blue, Creeps is red. If you're talking about percentage of increase in your Creep farm from Midas, so consider that first. Your Creep farm is 56, your Midas is 114. That's nearly double 56. So in a low GPM situation, in a high fighting situation, you can increase your creep farm by 200%. You're tripling your creep farm by getting a Midas and just driving by Midas and then continue on fighting. 300% increase by 200, three times your farm. And a 750 gold per minute situation where you have a Midas, 586 of your farm comes from creeps and 114 from Midas. That's roughly one fifth. So when you're farming with a Midas and you already have a ton of farm, you're only increasing your farm by about 20% uh, of, your, of your creeps. So it's, 
if you look at it as a percentage of creeps that you would be farming, it becomes a little bit different in your mind. You're like, wow, like supports might actually find better use of this because they're barely getting anything from creep. So Midas is a huge percentage of their income, as you can see by this big blue chunk. And for this, Midas is a pretty small chunk and it might not be worth it for uh, super farmed heroes just because they're gonna replace it. They could be farming stacks more efficiently with Battle Fury and plenty of other reasons. And of course, this isn't a black and white thing. Just because you have lower GPM doesn't mean you should get Midas. It's just something to consider in your calculations for, oh, should I get Midas this game? Should I not? Should I get a Blink Dagger or what? Because if you get a Blink Dagger, your kills on objectives is gonna be much higher because you're gonna be dying less too. But you also have to consider a situation where you get a blink dagger and you don't actually fight at all and that's kind of a wasted blink dagger if you're not doing anything with it just like a midas if you never use it it's 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 useless why would you get it right so sometimes you can just get a midas into a blink and kind of make up for the best of both worlds um but that's a situation that you're gonna have to gauge for yourself and it's gonna depend game uh to game to game and Again, there's no clear-cut situation as to when to get Midas and when not to get Midas. Uh, you just have to play it by ear, and I just encourage different schools of thinking for Midas instead of, oh, if I'm farming a lot, I should get Midas so I can boost my GPM. That's a very one-dimensional way and not the right way to consider it in all situations. Um, so I touched upon a couple of other things, but mostly right now it's overshadowed by Mom just because Mask of Madness helps you farm insanely quick you don't have to skip over any camps and in the early game you're limited by uh, by time spent killing creeps and although Hand of Midas helps you kill one creep faster every 100 seconds mom just helps you kill I don't even know how many creeps in a hundred uh, seconds more than Midas and it's just far more efficient at this point in time um, and it also it kind of helps you fight right but Again, you have to consider fact, what if you're going to die because you get a Mask of Madness and you're just going to waste that gold because it's unreliable gold and Midas is reliable gold. Uh, you're just going to waste that gold because you die in fights and you can't actually come to fights. Uh, as opposed to Midas, like, okay, if I die in fights, at least I have this huge experience bank and this huge reliable uh, bank, gold bank to fall back on. So consider the pros and cons. There are definite pros uh, over Mom and there are definite pros that Mom has over the... Uh, hand of Midas so consider both 6.84 is coming soon so um, mom probably getting nerfed I would say just like uh, most of the quote unquote OP things in the next patch so I uh, hope that encouraged a little bit of different thinking for the hand of Midas don't be one dimensional about it I encourage that for almost every single thing in Dota so uh, please don't be stubborn open your mind up, and you'll become a far better player. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. YouTube.com slash Merlini Dota. And I will see you guys next time for another tips and tricks or theory crafting.